In this video, we're going to complete example two. To help us evaluate this problem, we're also going to be referring to a present value table. This is the table we're going to be referring to. It says that Jane has $12,000 sitting in her bank account. She receives an interest rate of 4% per annum compounded quarterly. Her sister Karen has no money in her bank and would like to have the same amount of money as Jane. These sisters must be very competitive. What quarterly repayment will Karen need to make so that she has the same amount of money as Jane by the end of two years, assuming Jane makes no repayments? Now, there's quite a lot of information here, so let's break this into two parts. Let's talk about what's happening with Jane, and let's talk about what's happening with Karen separately. Now, I probably should have mentioned that they're both going to use the same bank, meaning they're both going to have the same interest rate. So let's make some calculations for this interest rate. We know it's 4% per annum, but it's compounded quarterly. And there are four quarters in a year, so we need to divide this by four, which gives us 1% per quarter as opposed to 4% per year. So we'll say that both of them have an interest rate of 1% per quarter. We also need to talk about the number of time periods. This is over a period of two years, and it's compounded quarterly. And there are four quarters of the year once again. So 2 times 4 is 8. And both of them have the same time period of 8 quarters. This is because we're trying to see how much money they both have by the end of two years. Now you might notice that Jane starts with a large sum of money sitting in her bank account. That's referred to as the present value. So Jane has a present value of $12,000. Whereas Karen doesn't have a present value. She doesn't start with any money in her bank account. Instead, she's going to make repayments. Now we don't know what these repayments are, so we'll put question mark there. We also mentioned that Jane makes no repayments. So for Jane, we're going to write that our repayments D are zero dollars. Now if Jane has a bank account with $12,000 in it at the very beginning, and she leaves that money in that bank account for a period of two years or eight quarters, and it accumulates interest at a rate of 1% per quarter, how much money will she have in her bank account at the end of the two years? Now, I'm not going to ask you to calculate that because I've calculated this already. So the future value or the amount of money she will have in her bank account at the end of two years is $12,994.28. Now, Karen wants to have the exact same amount of money. So we want Karen to have the same future value of $12,994.28. So we need to figure out what repayment will give Karen this future value. Now I want to remind you that we've calculated the number of time periods as 8 and our interest rate is 1% per quarter. So if we go back to our present value table, we had 1% and 8, and when we line these up, we get the number 7.652. So we'll write this down, 7.652. Now, what are we going to do with this number? This is our magic number. And you might remember that what you normally do is take your repayment, multiply it by this number, 7.652, and this will give you your present value, because this is a present value table. So what is our present value? Well, when we talk about our present value, we're talking about the amount of money that Jane had at the beginning in her bank account. So D times 7.652 will equal $12,000. Now I haven't given myself enough room, so I'm going to move something. Now I'm going to divide both sides 
by 7.652. And when I do this, it's going to cancel out the 7.652 on the left, leaving me with D on the left. When I perform the calculation on the right, I go 12,000 divide 7.652. And this comes out to $1,568.22. $1,568.22. And this is the solution for example two. This is the repayment that Karen must make every quarter if she hopes to have the exact same future value that Jane will have, remembering that Jane did not make repayments, she just started off with a lump sum at the beginning. I would like to point out that if you're solving a question like this, the only work you need to show is what I've shown here on the right. What I've shown here on the left under Jane and Karen is something that I just did to try and help you visualize what's happening. When you complete a present value problem, you actually don't calculate future value like I did. Anyway, that concludes example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.